every single human has a unique purpose to fulfill and each of us is of infinite worth and potential not to be compared to anyone else there are two ways to live a life of primary greatness or a life of secondary greatness primary greatness is who you really are your character your integrity your deepest motives and desires secondary greatness is popularity titles positions fame fortune and honors 64,000 is the median number of words per book average person reads about 200 words per minute simple math will tell us that is one book in 320 minutes to accomplish this in seven days numbers say you would have to read for 45 minutes a day don't forget to subscribe hit that notification button like comment and share enjoy welcome to the book of the week series every week as I read another amazing title I share it with the world my name is Igor SF Walker today we look at primary greatness the 12 levers of success by Stephen R Covey so how about you slow down and relax reduce all that noise for just a bit make that choice and decide to listen in this video we are reminded that the intrinsic rewards of primary greatness integrity responsibility and contribution far outweigh the extrinsic reward of secondary greatness money popularity and the self-absorbed pleasure-ridden life that some people consider success stick around till the end I will share with you some tools I do have and use that will help you tremendously in this game of life discover a way to find out what actually motivates you what innate human need is driving all of your decisions and your behavior I will share some tools to improve your self-awareness social awareness self-management and relationship management ah, leadership is communicating to another person their worth and potential so clearly they are inspired to see it in themselves to rearrange deck chairs is to put appearances before reality to care more about image than substance to have your priorities backwards and that's what we do we to we put last things first the result is missed goals failed careers broken families bad health faltering companies lost friendships a life swallowed up into debris of poor decisions things that matter most must never be at the mercy of things that matter least a successful life is about primary greatness a life of duty honor integrity perseverance self-sacrifice and service regardless of material rewards or circumstances these are natural universal unbreakable principles ironically secondary greatness often but not always follows primary greatness the principles that do govern reality are the same principles that govern success and if you violate those principles you will suffer the consequences you won't necessarily feel guilty or even uncomfortable if you do violate a principle at least not immediately you might even feel what researchers do call the cheaters high the satisfying feeling of getting away with it many people get pleasure out of cheating on their taxes padding their expense accounts or bad mouthing somebody they may even congratulate themselves and feel superior to the poor saps who do not cheat 
However, most of us know deep down when we are hurting others or ourselves, the consequences to our character are inescapable. The principles that govern reality are inarguable. They are beyond our control. They don't care if we do believe in them. They simply are. Thus, we're more likely to succeed in life if we align ourselves to those principles and then simply stop trying to ignore them. If you want to happy, happy, have a happy marriage, be the kind of person who generates positive energy, sidesteps negative energy rather than empowering it. If you want to have a more pleasant, cooperative teenager, be a more understanding, empathic, consistent, loving parent. If you want to have more freedom, more latitude in your job, be a more responsible and a more helpful and a more contributing employee. If you want to be trusted, be trustworthy. We all actually live three lives. The public, the private, and the secret. The secret life is where your heart is. Where your real motives are, the ultimate desires of your life. It is also the source of primary greatness. If you do have the courage to explore your secret life, you can honestly question your deepest motivations. One of the exciting fruits of the secret life is the ability to consciously choose your own motives. And until you choose your own motives, you really can't choose to live your own life. Everything flows out of motives and motivations. They are the root of our deepest desires. Now, the question is, which motives will we put first in our lives? People who regularly explore their secret life and examine their motives are better able to see into the heart of others, practice empathy, empower them and affirm their worth and their identity. See, a good self-affirmation has five characteristics. It is personal, meaning it is written in the first person. It is positive rather than negative, meaning that it affirms what is good and right. It is in present tense, meaning you are doing it now or have the potential for doing it. It is visual, meaning you can see it clearly in your mind's eye. And finally, it is emotional, meaning you have strong feelings attached to it. Our character is what we do when we think no one is looking, said H. Jackson Brown. Character, what you are, a character, is ultimately more important than competence, what you can do. Primary greatness at its base is a matter of character, courage, and consideration are the key building blocks of emotional maturity and that emotional maturity is the is actually foundational to all decisions in all relationships balance the courage of your commitment to principles with consideration for others how can we reprogram ourselves well often we must first be humbled either by circumstances such as not getting desired results and losing our assets or by crises or not getting the meaning and fulfillment we do desire or failing to maintain good relationships with our colleagues, our spouses and our kids. We are then more willing to accept the fact that universal principles like respect, empathy, honesty and trust ultimately govern. The key to primary greatness is to be centered on principles. We're not in control of our world. Principles are in control. We are arrogant when we think we are in control. Yes, we may control our actions. Yes, 
but not the consequences of our actions. Those are controlled by principles, by natural laws. Building character and quality of life is actually a function of aligning our beliefs and behaviors with the universal principles. These principles are impersonal, external, factual, objective, and self-evident. They operate regardless of our awareness of them, or our obedience or disobedience to them. As human beings, we have four unique endowments. Self-awareness, conscience, independent will, and creative imagination that not only separate us from the animal world, but also help us distinguish between reality and illusion, and align our lives with the laws that govern quality of life. Most people live believing that they can't get away with losing their balance, and that's living a lie. It's get, it gets translated in a thousand and one different ways. I agree with what Gandhi said. A person cannot do the right in one department of life while attempting to do wrong in another department. Life is one indivisible whole. You cannot ignore your family while you put 18-hour days and expect to have a great family life. You cannot fritter away your time on social media without paying the price in terms of your health and your productivity. I'm sorry, but reality does not work that way. You see, the father of all virtues is courage, because when put to the test, courage defines our commitment to those virtues. Eventually, every value is tested, whether we align our values and whether they will align, and the habits with those principle, principles is the big question. Again, the question is to be or not to be. That's the question. Seeming to be is not the question. In other words, will we really live by our principles? Many of us are coerced into humility, but it is better to humble ourselves by choice. As we do develop more internal security and integrity, we will then be humbled by conscience, not by circumstance, not by force. Each of us is a composite of three selves. The public self, our public image and persona. The private self, what we do in our own private world of family and close associates when we do let our hair down, and our deep secret self, our inner self, where we can examine the script of our lives, our motivations, our tendencies, our habits, rooted in our genetic code, in our environment, and in our social conditioning. Great minds have thought, know thyself, control thyself and give thyself. And I would emphasize there is power in that sequence. Know thyself, control thyself, and give thyself. One child of integrity is actually wisdom. If your security comes from within, you simply have better judgment. You're not in an overactive state. You do not dichotomize. You do not catastrophize. You're not extreme. You have better overall life balance. A second child of integrity is the abundance mentality. When you get your security from within, you're not in a constant state of comparison from without. Therefore, you can have an abundance mindset towards life. You stop worrying about others getting more credit or having more success in life. A third child of integrity is synergy. 
when your security is not tied up with what other people think of you, you can work with them to come up with better ideas in a spirit of a win-win. Another sweet fruit of personal and organizational integrity is relationships of trust with all stakeholders. You see, many people resist personal transformation, even when they know it is the right thing to do. Thus, they miss half the story of what it takes to become a leader, the private victory. The private victory is the victory over self. You cannot hope to lead others until you can lead your own life with integrity and manage yourself with discipline. Why do so many people forfeit the private victory? Well, they transfer the responsibility for their lives to others or to their environment. Risk and effort, comfort zone, mindset or skill set, and a paradigm of lifelong learning is not deeply embedded in their minds. The key is not to prioritize what's on your schedule, but to schedule your priorities. Efficiency is different from effectiveness. Effectiveness is a results word. Efficiency is a process word. Some people can climb the ladder of success very efficiently, but it is if leaning against the long, wrong wall, they will not be effective. You can work very efficiently on the wrong priorities. The first question which the priest and the Levite asked was, if I stop to help this man, what will happen to me? But the Good Samaritan reversed the question. If I do not stop to help this man, what will happen to him? Said Martin Luther King Jr. Caring about the individual works because it is a paradigm focused on people, not things. It is focused on relationships, not schedules. It is focused on effectiveness, not efficiency. It is focused on personal leadership, not resource management. Ah, oh, what a difference it makes to work in a caring culture. We must learn not to be offended, to refuse to self-alienate. But how? We can cultivate our security from within, based on integrity, to fundamental principles so that we can love when we are not loved, be kind when people aren't kind to us, and then be patient when others are impatient with us. The next time you feel offended, whoa, or slighted, try patience. What difference does it make to your attitude? Moral authority makes up much of the power we do have as leaders, especially in flattened organizations in which there are many knowledge workers. In an information world, you cannot really throw your weight around because the same information is available to everyone. Your moral authority is the most powerful thing that you actually do have. The love of learning and the search for wisdom help make life worthwhile. We all have a moral obligation to the people who are important in our lives, as well as to ourselves, to learn and to progress without ceasing. We often talk of the need of the continuing education in the context of work, but we rarely speak of it as a governing principle of life. In fact, continuous learning will actually save your life because without it, you slip quickly 
into irrelevance. The principle of balance is key to continuous learning. I do recommend a balance between personal and organizational development, between current job-related needs and future requirements, between industry-related learning and general education. Make sure your approach is systematic and then based on feedback to you personally and professionally, your learning should balance theory with practice, arts with the sciences. <clears throat> Wisdom is knowing that sustained positive change begins on the inside. Wisdom requires both character and competence. Wisdom is manifested when character and competence overlap. Wisdom lies beyond knowledge and information. There is something in us that is always calling us to be greater and better than we currently are. And if we do not listen to that voice, we risk at every moment failing falling into secondary greatness where we become limited by the social lens through which we see the world. Or even worse, we become fixated on the forces that constrain us and then fall victim to an enemy-centered paranoia. By contrast, the end of a life filled with primary greatness is actually wisdom and a perspective that embraces principles, continuous growth, and an integrated wholeness. And there you have it, primary greatness. Please do help out. It is easy. Simply like this video. If you have enjoyed it, like it, like it, like it. Share it too. Spread the word. Do leave a comment and share your thoughts. Start a conversation. Subscribe to my channel and stay up to date. You know how to do this. The link to this book is in the description below. So you buy it, you read, you never stop learning, especially learning about yourself and nature. So gift yourself by taking the free human needs test on my website. Find out what actually motivates you. What innate human need is driving all of your decisions and your behavior. And if you feel you are ready to improve your self-awareness, social awareness, self-management, and relationship management even further, then do check out my Master of Life Awareness program. It will teach you about universal laws, the universal principles. It will teach you about emotional intelligence. It will teach you about personality, character, human need psychology. So check it out. The links are in the description below. Thank you. Love and respect.